Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Kerwin, and I'm the Director of Marketing here at Wrenchway. And I am joined today by Tiffany Sherado, who is the CFO and part owner of Lifetime Transmissions in Oklahoma. Tiffany, how are you doing? I'm good, Sarah. How are you? Good. It's good to see you again. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So want to tell um, our audience briefly about who Lifetime Transmissions is, what you guys do, um, just kind of a brief overview. Sure. So we're a transmission shop. We do strictly transmission work here at our facility. We're a 10 bay, almost 10,000 square foot facility. We do a lot of big trucks. Um, but since we moved to our new location in 2016, we're on a front street. So we've done a lot more uh, commuter cars and front wheel drives now as well. So we, we do a little bit of everything except for European. Um, we've been in business offering a lifetime warranty on all of our transmissions for as long as the owner owns the vehicle since 2004. So we've been around doing that and proving our point that it could be done for a long, long time. That is great. That's awesome. So why don't you tell me a little bit about um, how you guys work with students and schools in your area? Sure. So anytime the school needs something, they give us a call because uh, we're always open. You know, our doors are always open to them. They'll bring students over to Shadow. They'll send them over, you know, a group of them for maybe an hour just to walk around and see what we do. Um, because a lot of students don't really realize there's a career opportunity in transmissions. You know, they know automotive and a lot of them will go to a lube shop or a tire shop. But transmissions just you know, it's kind of surprising. They don't get a whole lot of attention. So they see a completely different world and, and more opportunities when they're exposed to a shop like ours. Um, they also will send students over for actual job shadowing. So we've had a number of students from our technical college who come over and work two or three days a week um, part time. And I've got one who's actually come on and we hired him on after graduation. So we do a lot of things. They'll call us up for supplies, like maybe a transmission course that their kids can tear down and work on and, and look at. Um, we've provided them with posters and educational things. So really just anything we can do, to try to keep that communication open. And then when they get a really good promising student, I'm the first one they call. That's that's the ideal situation right there, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, you said, I think you mentioned the tech school. Do you work with high schools in the area as well? We do. We actually, um, just before COVID hit, like during that, that March, we had a company, uh, Malin with ESI, who does a lot of automotive training, he's an automotive coach. He volunteered if all we had to do was pay his hotel and food and chauffeur her him around. But we had him come down and he put on three big seminars, two at the high schools and then one at the Votech for the students to expose them to the automotive industry and try to help the industry recruit some new technicians. And it was a whole lot of fun. We did um, Tulsa Public Schools, did an evening one with the parents where the parent came in with their kiddo and got That's to see the opportunity. right there. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was great. We had barbecue dinner. Um, we went out during the day at the Broken Arrow Public Schools, a high school there, and fed the kids Chick-fil-A and they got to ask questions and see some really cool things. And then did pizza and stuff at the, the technical college with both of their classes. We were there all day. So yeah, we do we do a whole lot of stuff. That's fantastic. I can't think of a better way than um, like Chick-fil-A and pizza to get to a high schooler's heart. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I love that you guys got the parents involved as well, because I feel like that's just as important as getting the students exposure to the industry is getting the parents um, exposure and showing them that, you know, maybe it's not the grease monkey quiet industry that maybe has a reputation of in the past, but it's actually very sophisticated and very like technology based now. It is. We, we need those guys that like IT, yes. you know, and even for, you know, Sarah, women, I work with the amazing women in automotive. So we're always wanting to recruit women. And now mom and dad come in and they're like, oh, wow, this is a career my daughter could actually succeed in you know, she, she could be able to do that. Whereas years ago, you know, you'd never even think of allowing your daughter to go into that industry, but it, it's growing. Women are becoming owners and, and it's great. Absolutely. Um, why don't you we'll pause briefly and will you tell us a little bit about Amazing Women in Automotive? Because that's such an amazing group that you're involved with. Sure. Yeah. So ESI had uh, approached me after we had done that because they're always looking at, at ways to help the industry as a whole. And our facility has kind of that attitude as well. We think shops should work 
together. We're not competitors. We're, you know, we're in this together. There's enough work for everybody. So when they asked me to do that, to work with these other shops and develop a support group and networking for women to promote women in automotive, I don't on it because I thought it was great. Women are very detail oriented. They bring so much to a shop and a facility. You know, one of the things that I ask is, who does your holiday parties for your staff? You know, it, it's usually the one woman that they have working in the shop yep. or the wife, you know, if it's a, a shop that a man and wife, husband and wife own, it's her doing all that stuff. Exactly. And that really helps the morale. You know, the staff loves that. So yeah, we go around and promote that and it's opened a lot of eyes and it's so good to hear when you have a shop owner come up to you and go, I had one female tech a long time ago and she was the best tech I ever had. <laughs> I would love to have more. So yeah, yes. I'm really really hoping someday it's going to be nothing to walk into a shop and see females working on cars. Absolutely. It's pretty cool. I think it's awesome to have groups like that, especially I can imagine as a young female who is interested in getting into the industry, it could be kind of intimidating if they're, you know, looking at taking a shop class at their high school and it's, it's all males and so right. having these sort of resources where it's like females kind of coming together, talking about their experiences in the industry is so important for them to have that support. So mm -hmm. very definitely. Cool. Yes, thank right. you. Um, why don't you tell me about one of your favorite experiences working with a student or students with schools? Um, yeah, sure. So one of the, the neatest things that I think has really grown us as individuals and, and grown our company um, is when the school approached me to take on a young man who was uh, hard of hearing. He had cochlear implants. And so our first concern is safety for our staff all the time. You know, if, if a lift is going to come down or you've got to yell at him for a safety reason, you know, that, that was my first big concern. Um, but they had explained and what we had learned is that their other senses are so heightened that it's it's really not a concern. So I said, send the young man out. We'll do an interview. We ended up doing two. We were able to communicate with him because he can read lips. Um, and they were going to provide an interpreter for a little while. So we had an interpreter with the school. But this young man, I'm so happy that he's actually the one that we brought on and hired full time. I'm so happy that that we've learned uh, to work with him and that we gave him that opportunity. He even helped our um, ATRA, the Automatic Transmission Rebuilders Association. They have a like a virtual learning center and we have all of our new technicians go on there and take the basic courses. Well, with him, he needed the closed captioning. They didn't have it. So I emailed the guy that was over that and he was just like, why didn't I think about that? You know, even as a technician's age, sometimes it becomes difficult to hear. And so he helped him improve that. And it's just been, it's been great to have him. It's been so neat to learn and just interact with him. We, we've all learned so much from him. He's just a doll. That's amazing. And the, I mean, adding in the closed captioning, it's, I mean, it's brilliant. It opens up the opportunity to a whole nother group of people who otherwise might not have had that. So that's fantastic. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I very just, cool. Yeah. Tell people, tell people, tell shops to be open-minded. Yeah. Um, you know, shops are worried about working with the schools and I would, my advice, if you're considering, is it, don't go into it thinking you're going to get this young man who knows everything. It does take some work. They don't know a lot. Some of them have very little experience. It does take some patience. Uh, but I think you'll find that over time, it'll be really rewarding. And if you get involved in the boards and you're really active, um, what you'll find is it's not always the school's fault. We really need to change the way we're teaching about the industry. These nine month courses aren't long enough. These cars are becoming way too complicated. Uh, when I was sitting down with uh, the gentleman who's over our tech school, he said, you know, ASE is wanting us to teach some of this new ADAS training. And they said, well, what do you want me to leave out? Because there's no way we can fit that in there as it is right now. Yeah. Right. So you start leaving out the basics to teach them the higher end stuff. And it's just, I, I can see now being on the other side of it, what's going on. And, and the industry itself really needs some change. Absolutely. I could not agree more. Well, anything else to add for um, our Wrenchway Schools audience? 
just that I, I hope um, this interview will maybe open up some people's minds to trying to be involved with the schools more and and take the time. I, I know how it is being an owner. I know Sarah, you and I have set this appointment up three times. <laughs> Because, like, you know, you're still trying to hire and you're, you're still trying to take care of your staff and just do your daily stuff. And it is hard. But um, like I said, it, it's it's so rewarding. I, I think you'll find that the, the benefit outweighs the all the extra time that you have to put into it. Well, Tiffany, I am so glad we got a chance to sit down and talk. I think your insight is so valuable. Um, and I just applaud what you're doing, everything you're doing with amazing women in automotive and just, I don't Thank know, you. you're running a great business over there. <laughs> Thank you very much.